This is Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. From the corporate office to the cab of a truck, they're here to inspire and empower women in all professions. So gear down, sit back, and enjoy. Welcome to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy DeCaro. We're a show that works to inspire and empower women in every profession and lifestyle, including the office, trucking, the trades, and even motherhood. We power women on the road to success. We tackle all kinds of topics, and we work to encourage women to be their very best with informative guests and women who've been champions. I'm Shelley. And I'm Kathy. No topic is taboo on our rig. We tackle the tough topics along with the not-so-tough topics. And we like to feature experts and celebrities who can assist women in being the very best they can be. Many people make New Year's resolutions to quit a habit or make a change. Stopping drinking is one of these changes. We wanted to talk about that. Marcy Hopkins is the host of a three-time Telly Award-winning weekly talk show called Wake Up with Marcy and Hillary. It's a talk show with heart. Marcy is a respected figure in inspirational and educational television. Her show reaches over 2.8 million viewers monthly on the CBS-owned WLNY-TV in New York. It features candid conversations with guests that inspire viewers to find strength, hope, and their purpose to live their happiest lives. Marcy wants to talk about what Dry January is and how we can begin 2024 with a clear and healthy mind. Marcy is an accomplished author who wrote Chaos to Clarity, Seeing the Signs and Breaking the Cycles. Her memoir is the account of her own journey, with stories of inspiration, hope, and strength through recovery. She breaks the cycle of negativity with valuable insights into navigating trauma and embracing your best life. Marcy believes in empowering people with positive self-affirmations and advice for mental health. She wants to help people begin the new year by changing their lifestyle for the better. We have Marcy with us today to talk about this and the topic of Dry January. Welcome, Marcy. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. It's fantastic to be here. Thank you. You know, I thought before we delve into dry January, we could talk a little bit about you. You are an amazing lady with some great messages of empowerment. How did you get started? No kidding. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) You really are. How did you get started in inspirational television? Well, I myself put down the drink, uh, October of 23 was eight years. Uh, so eight years ago, eight, eight years and change. And once I started living a sober life and healing from my past trauma and literally rewiring the way that I thought, Uh, my life began to change in such beautiful ways. I I was living a life that I never thought possible. And what I wanted to do was create a platform to share stories of hope and educate people and provide resources and really delve into everyday uh, subjects that, that we are faced with and and how we can get through them and no pe- and let people know that they're not alone and it is capable you are capable of getting through anything no no matter what life throws your way i love it yeah that, you know we hear so much negativity on television and radio to have something that's inspirational with really good takeaways that's so needed today especially since the pandemic i think there were a lot of people just kind of walking into walls not sure what the heck happened? And they really realized they needed something else in their lives. Absolutely. Yeah. I think people really started seeking positive programming, uh, recognizing, you know, because we're we're racing around so much that we really weren't taking the time to see, how am I feeling? What are Mm -hmm. things, you know, what is going on with my life? Am I happy? Right. We were just kind of going through the motions and then we were forced to stop. And it was like, wow, like, you know, you know, we were kind of made to start 
self-reflecting and maybe we were faced with, you know, some grievances and horrible things, you know, with our family, you know, losing our family members and friends and, and we were just needing things to pick us up. Yep. And I just knew that I wanted to be a resource. I wanted to be a place for people to go. And I myself, I, I really can't even watch the news. Um, I try to stay away from the negative programming. I, I know that it's important that we know what's going on, but we really need to limit the amount we we watch because mm -hmm. it really, it drags us down. I mean, it oh, yeah. takes energy so low and you start living in such fear. And that's what I hope that my program and, and just what everyone and, and what you guys are doing, that we can just provide mm -hmm. yeah. a place where people can go and feel, feel better when they walk away from spending the 30 minutes or hour with us. Yeah. A safe place where you can feel empowered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because when you're looking at all of the news, unfortunately, if it bleeds, it leads. And it's <laughs> you get away from that. And you feel so much better because you're not hearing, oh, my goodness, the world's off its axis. It's changing its pivot. See, it's crashing and burning. News at 11, news at 6. Yes. You know, right. it's not positive and it creates anxiety. Yes, I I think we really saw that during the pandemic when you saw all of the different areas of the country that had increases in uh, COVID and in the fear. There was so much fear because we didn't know what was going on. Right. And I think that people did kind of go through a catharsis trying to do some inward thinking how they could do an introspection, make some improvements. They saw some voids in their lives, but also, unfortunately, We've also seen an uptick in addiction, not only with alcohol, but drugs. Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I mean, think about in those situations, we we tend to turn to things that are bad for us, right? Yeah. Whether it's drinking too mm -hmm. much, eating too much. And that's that's the easy way to cope, honestly. Um, or not being, cope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cope, right. But, you know, being mindful and being healthy and making wellness a priority, it, it's, it's not easy, but it's very rewarding. It really is. Do you think a lot of people are fearful? That's why they don't stop a habit. I mean, it really, it's, it's an insidious cycle. People will drink or do drugs to stuff the feelings, to avoid the problems. And mm -hmm. of course, then the body has to have it. So it's, it's a, just a vicious cycle. Well, that's, that's like, for me, I, you know, I had so much trauma mm -hmm. and I learned at a very young age, I could escape with alcohol. And I continued that pattern uh, up until my forties, until I stopped drinking and my life was about to be in shambles. Um, and I saw it with my parents. I saw it with my, my grandfather. Um, you know, there was, I was basically taught that alcohol was the answer and, yeah. you know, when bad things happen or good things happen. So, and I was able to escape with alcohol. Um, and I, I, I never thought in a million years, I would be able to live life without alcohol, alcohol, because it was, it was all I knew. Right. Mm -hmm. But once I was able to surrender and recognize that my life was falling apart and I didn't want it to anymore, I didn't want to live in the lies anymore. Um, I was I was done. I was just done. And that's when I was able to to make those changes. I mean, you know, a lot of people out there might be drinking and it's just a bad habit. And it, it, you know, we, we, uh, so many things we do in our lives are just habits, right? Because they're things that we do over and over again. Yep. Um, and so it, it is easier. Maybe if you just got a bad habit, it's easier to stop and learn the ways that you can cope in a better way, or you can handle stress and life in a better way, but it's just knowing the tools, knowing what to do. Right. Um, but you know, I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't think that I would ever be able to put down the drink, 
but gratefully I did made that hard decision and it is the hardest decision I've ever made. But um, now that I know the the tools and I use them every day, uh, it's it's an abundant life and, and nothing, well, I can't say right stay in the day, but at this point in my life, I can't imagine ever picking up again because of, of the, the life I live today. And that's what I want other people to know that life is so much better without those negative coping mechanisms. Yeah. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Dean Michael, the tax doctor here. I have one question for you. Do you want to stop worrying about the IRS? If the answer is yes, then look no further. I've been around for years. I've helped countless people across the country and my success rate speaks for itself. So now you know where to find good, honest help with your tax problems. What are you waiting for? If you owe more than $10,000 to the IRS or haven't filed in years, call me now at 888-557-4020 or go to mytaxhelpmd.com for a free consultation and get your life back. Industry movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry. Our safety champions, the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of. And join us on social media. Learn more at TruckingMovesAmerica.com. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you're enjoying this informative episode of Women Road Warriors, I wanted to mention Kathy and I explore all kinds of topics that will power you on the road to success. We feature a lot of expert interviews. Plus, we feature celebrities and women who've been trailblazers. Please check out our podcast at womenroadwarriors.com and click on our episodes page. We're also available wherever you listen to podcasts on all the major podcast channels like Spotify, Apple, YouTube, Amazon Music, Audible, you name it. Check us out and bookmark our podcast. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, YouTube, and other sites. And tell others about us. We want to help as many women as possible. When things get stressful, we often turn to things that are bad for us to help us cope. The problem is these coping mechanisms can become self-destructive. Being mindful and being healthy and making wellness a priority are not easy, but it's very rewarding and it's essential. You need to know the tools to change. If you have a full-blown addiction, it's more complicated, but it can be done and it's life-changing. We can free ourselves from all of our bad habits and addictions. It opens up a whole new world of opportunity. Life is so much better without negative coping mechanisms. Marcy Hopkins is sharing her personal experience with us. She's the host of a three-time Telly Award-winning weekly talk show called Wake Up with Marcy and Hillary. Marcy is a respected figure in inspirational and educational television with 2.8 million monthly viewers. We're talking about addiction as well as dry January. Marcy's been speaking from the heart and openly sharing her struggles with addiction and how she rose above it to enrich her life and help transform others' lives. Marcy, what kind of tools did you use to get you through that? Because initially, you have a lot of challenges. I'm sure you had some self-doubt at the beginning, like, I really want to do this. And of course, you've got the the, the drinking thinking, well, I could just have one. Mm. It'll be okay. You know, that sort of thing. Well, I knew at that point, like, I couldn't have any more. And I went to the 12 step program and mm-hmm. I'll never forget that first day. And, and, and believe me, I had tried it. I had tried before and I had convinced myself that I wasn't an alcoholic, but when I finally knew and life was completely in shambles and I went to the, to the rooms, I, I just, I guess I, I just was in complete um, surrender mode. Like I just knew I give up. I give up living this life that I'm living today. And once I went to the rooms, I was, I was like ready to embrace anything that they told me. So I was, you know, I wanted to learn how can I get through life without doing this, working the steps, 
and I talk about this in my book, what, what each one of these steps, what I learned through each of these steps, how it helped me. And that's what really helped me with the, the trauma healing, um, moving from a victim mindset. And you asked me some of the tools. I mean, like I had to really change what I did daily. Um, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't wake up and, feel sorry for myself each day. And, and, you know, how am I going to get through this? It was, I'm grateful for today. Right. So finding mm -hmm. things that I was grateful for, uh, reading in, in inspirational, uh, material, um, praying, meditating, uh, eating, changing my eating, um, exercising, you know, there's, there's a, and, and my sleep got so much better. Right. So when you, when you stop putting these toxic substances into your body, your body has to heal. And yeah. so it takes time. And I, so I had to sleep a lot, uh, that I had to take naps a lot. I, I had to meditate. So it was an all day thing to really start shifting, uh, my mindset and really how I functioned daily. It, it, it's, it does take a lot of time in my case is very similar to your story. <clears throat> and it, I took, uh, by the age of 40, I had, uh, I've been nursing for 13 years already. And I kept putting one foot in front of the other, taking care of other people and not taking care of myself until I hit that brick wall and couldn't uh, even read the sheet. Uh, my, like the 10 patients that I had to take care of, I couldn't even see the words on the paper. Mm -hmm. And it took, that was the beginning of my, my, my journey into recovery. But, but did it happen overnight? Absolutely not. It took, yeah. it took years mm -hmm. from, um, I went three times to, uh, a women's recovery program in Canada called uh, uh, wellspring. It was through the hope mission and where 25 women, you live in a, in a common house, you each have your, you share an apartment with, with each other. Um, and you live there every day for a year. And we had recovery. We had treatment every day from, we had Bible study every morning. And then we had, different classes, recovery classes on boundaries, on self-esteem, on anger mm -hmm. management, on um, sexual, I had to take a sexual assault recovery course, which was 12 weeks. I had to do that twice <laughs> because I had so many layers. Yeah. Um, but the, the biggest part was learning, well, to unlearn everything that had been That's programmed it. into my mind. Mm -hmm. And then I had to relearn who Kathy was at the age of 40. But the hardest part about all that was accepting, uh, you know, how all my all my qualities and how awesome I am and how, you know, how empowering I can be and all, 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 all that I have to give back to the world. But I mean, it's easier said than done, because when you come from such a, a traumatic life of, of abuse mm -hmm. and um, negativity, how do you flip that switch? How do you learn yeah. to live on the positive side? And so it, it took a long time. And to this day, even though I have almost 12 years sober, um, it's, it's still, I still struggle with it. I mean, I don't always have good days. I have days where I'm like, okay, today I'm not going to drink. And you know, you know what? I guess it's time to hit a meeting. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, um, I too had sexual abuse um, in my childhood. Um, I don't know if that's your story, but I, I had to yeah, deal with it. Yeah. And I had abandonment issues. You know, the story yeah, wasn't me too. <laughs> yeah, the story wasn't pretty, and um, and I I learned all those years, uh, how to put up the walls and survive and push mm -hmm. through. And we get and, really good at it. Yeah, yeah, you get really good at it, and you know, people meet you and they, they think, wow, this person's got it all together. And so confident. I know, right. Inside, My nursing. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Like inside you're just crumbling and, mm -hmm. uh, you, you have no self-esteem. I had no self-love and, and it was about always giving to someone else, because if I took care of someone else, I didn't have to look at myself. Mm -hmm. And Kathy, that's Kathy, yeah. you said the same thing when you were in exactly. nursing. Yeah. 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 And I, and it is hard to recognize, like, I didn't even know who I was. Like when I got sober, what, like, who is Marcy? What do I, what do I like? Yeah. What are my passions? Mm -hmm. Like 
I had no I idea. I actually had to ask the, the counselor at the age of 40 what the word boundary meant. I did not know. I what? did not know what codependency meant. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm like, what? <laughs> the best word I ever learned in recovery was no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Today, it's amazing. Like the boundaries I'm able to put up, but in a kind way, right? It doesn't, oh, yeah. right? Like, I mean, people out there listening may think, oh, oh, I'm putting up a boundary. I mean, there's a, there's a kind way to do it, right? But it's you've got to think of yourself first so you can be the best for others. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. It, it's a matter of learning how to take care of yourself. It really is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm I'm so grateful today because I I can say, you know what? Yeah, I got to do this right now, but I need some self-care right now. So I'm taking this 30 minutes for myself because that can wait. Whereas before you just push through, push through. You're so depleted. Like, oh, it was exhausting. I don't know if you you heard of the book. Um, uh, it's the 12 step spiritual journey guide. That was the book that we had to do in Wellspring. And I'd had to do, I was, because I was there three times, I had to do that book separately three times. Mm -hmm. And it takes about four months to do. It's an in-depth, they sell it on Amazon. So it's a 12-step spiritual journey guide. And um, it's faith-based, but it doesn't matter what your addiction is. You can, you know, if it's alcohol, drugs, food, sex, whatever, you can just, you know, change words. Uh, make it work to what you need. But that book was by far one of the most self-revealing tools that I could say that really helped me um, figure out who I really was and what all like the depth of the trauma, because there's a lot of layers. Like the first time I went, I could deal with one thing. The second time I had another thing that I dealt with. And the third, by the time I went the third time, well, then I was able to chisel away at, to the, to the, to the roots of the mm-hmm. causes of all the trauma and not just chip away at the top. You know, I could actually dig deeper. Yeah. So I don't know if, if, uh, if you've ever heard about it, but I definitely recommend that book. I I, I mean, it sounds amazing. And, yeah. and it's yeah. the spiritual awakening that I've yeah. had that has yeah. made a huge significance in my life. And I had to do a lot of inner child work. I had mm-hmm. to, right. Uh, you know, to release, oh. Sure. all that we we carry i mean it literally at a cellular basis you know it, yeah. it this is this is it's serious like, it's not it's not just about okay i'm gonna decide today to get healthy you know it's there's a lot you do have to heal from mm-hmm. um and forgive and forgive yourself and you know there's a there's a long road to get to that forgiveness and the first part really is recognizing, though, that there is a deeper problem. Yes. Uh, I remember the very first uh, homework my my counselor gave me was, she gave me a picture of a water bottle. And you know how there's ridges on the water bottles? There's like a whole bunch of ridges. Yeah. And she said, I want you to, for every ridge that's on there, I want you to start at the bottom and write every single traumatic event that you can remember. Mm-hmm. And she said, take your time. You have a week to do it. And Um, right. Even if it's being, you know, laughed at, being bullied, called name, whatever it is, whether it's your your siblings or whatever. At first I thought it was the stupidest homework ever, but I'm like, Hey, you know what? I'm here for this reason. Let's just sit down and do it. It's one thing to know what happened to you, but it's a completely different set of circumstances when you, when you're sitting down and you're putting pen to paper. And I was astounded at, uh, once I started writing, I had stuff on one side of the bottle. It went down on the other side of the bottle. I had to flip the page yeah. and I, I'm writing more. And when I went back to see the counselor the week later, she said, um, she's looking at my paper, just sitting there all silently. And I'm kind of squirming on my chair. And she says, Kathy, do you really think that uh, over a three week period, you're going to be able to address all these issues. I mean, look at what you wrote, like, oh my God, you need, you see, ser- you need serious long-term treatment. Yeah. And it really struck home. So for people out there listening, maybe take some inventory. If you know, you have a problem um, with whatever it is, maybe start really taking some inventory on what happened in your life and how, what is it, the steps that you need to to take 
in order to change and to fix what it whatever's going on in your life? What resources are available to you in your immediate surroundings that you can access to today? I like and, that. And and the other thing that kind of piggyback on that, right? It's like the trauma that we had when we were younger and then the relationships we have as adults and how we are in those relationships and, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it kind of forms like, like for me, um, it was very hard for me to get close to someone. I thought that they were always going to hurt me or abandon me in some way, or were using me in some way. And I was always trying to create something, uh, you know, I, I would always choose someone that was actually very hurtful to me. Uh, they were not, you know, it was not a positive relationship. And so I had to do what you're talking about and, and make that inventory of how those people hurt me. But one of the wonderful things that came out of that was being self-aware of my part as an adult in these relationships. And once I was able to recognize my part, we really only have the ability to change how we react and how we handle things. Right. So very true. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that enabled me to start changing myself, recognizing my part that we all uh, perceive things differently. We hear things differently and, um, and, and then pausing and reacting differently. So these are all incredible lessons that I was able to learn and that helped me to create positive relationships in my, in my, my existing life, because, I was just taking from what I knew as a young person and all I saw was negative relationships and negative, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, negative treatment. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You were going to what was familiar. That was what you were accustomed to. Yeah. Yeah. Plus it also, if you put yourself in a destructive relationship, you, you can, you know, alienate yourself because you're afraid to get close. Well, if you're with someone that's, it's an impossible to have a close relationship, you accomplish that. And it's just a vicious cycle. Right. Like you, it's, I would step out of the relationship all the time because I was like, okay, well, I'm going to find someone else that, that will treat me what I, how I want to be treated. And then I would like leave them. And I'm like, I'm going to hurt you before you hurt me. Like, you you know, yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It was really destructive in so many ways. And actually I was listening to the Matthew Perry uh, audible book and he did the same thing. So it's really, that I think that that stems, he says from abandonment. And I was like, wow, I totally get that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Trucking Moves America Forward, or TMAF, is building a positive image of trucking by telling the story of the hardworking drivers and industry professionals who support the industry. And you can be a part of it. Learn more about TMAF and how you can join and be a part of the industry movement working to build a strong image of trucking by visiting TMAF's website at truckingmovesamerica.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our latest channel, TikTok. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. How do you flip the switch that takes you from drug and alcohol addiction to sobriety? You need to relearn how to live and how to develop self-love and healthy habits. We're talking about this for dry January, but it's information that's good at any time. Recovery is a process, and the process is different for everybody. Marcy Hopkins is our guest, and she's sharing how she succeeded in her recovery. She's the host of Wake Up with Marcy and Hillary on WLNY-TV in New York. Marcy quit drinking when she'd finally had enough and was ready to surrender and embrace the 12-step program that she found helpful in breaking free of her alcohol addiction. The 12-step program helped her in trauma healing and moving from the victim mindset. 
she achieved a spiritual awakening. Marcy says she had to change what she did daily, and she found being grateful, reading inspirational materials, meditation, and prayer had been life-changing. She also changed how she ate and exercised. Practicing self-care has been essential to her maintaining a sober life. All of these steps have led to Marcy's success, which she shares with others on her inspirational TV show. She's offering tremendous insight for people who want to break free from a drug or alcohol addiction today. Breaking away from the trauma and wounds are really important. Don't you think so, Kathy? I was just going to say, I had seven and a half years of extreme domestic violence from the year 2000 to 2007 or 8 during my nursing years, just because as a child, that's all I knew. That's all I grew up with. And in my, my, my choices later on in life, even though I, I, you know, I'm a professional and I I think I got my stuff together, all that inner, inner wounds, uh, it affects your, your, your thinking that no self-esteem, it just, it affects everything. So my decision-making, the men I chose to be with, oh my God, the fact that I'm alive is a free miracle. Yeah. It was screaming and the fighting and I, I had yep. domestic abuse, but it sounds like you were in a, an extremely domestic abusive yeah. relationship. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. You know, but, you know, it's like somebody puts their their hand around your throat and you're like, you know, it's wrong, but yet you, you, you accept it, right? Like, I don't know. It was like, well, this is what I'm used to. So I'll just yeah. forgive and move on. Sure. It's familiar. And mm-hmm. if you have a self-esteem issue, you don't feel you're worthy of anything better. And if you're conditioned that this is the kind of behavior that goes on, you don't know any differently. And it's no. breaking that cycle. Marcy, would you say that when you get sober, it really causes a reawakening? Oh, a reawakening. Absolutely. Like, I, I almost feel like you're even though you get older, you're stuck at at that age where the abuse and you start losing yourself. You you like stuck at that age. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I almost had to go back to that place, uh, reconnect, and then, uh, like I'll use the your word, awaken. Mm-hmm to the full Marcy, the full possibilities of who I am and my life. Yeah. Yes. Kathy, that happened with you. Oh my God. (laughs) It sure did a few times. (laughs) I must admit. Oh my God. So many, um, I guess my, my, my reawakening or my moment was that I was sharing with you a little bit earlier with Toothless Joe. Like finally, I I mean, it, it was the bottom of the barrel. I was literally, at the root cellar of rock bottom, standing drunk and homeless, having lost my nursing career, having nowhere to turn to. I had been robbed. I had literally only the clothes on my back. I had no identification. I had nothing. Talk about depression. Like, oh my God, you know, telling myself I'm educated. How does this happen? (laughs) I couldn't believe it. You know, I'm standing there looking at all these zombies and I'm like, what? Like, I I just, oh, just devastation. And when, Toothless Joe did that, you know, so, uh, he slapped me on the back saying, this is the life, you know, live it, love it. I'm like, dude, this is not my life. <laughs> this stops right now. And yeah, that was it. That was my moment, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. so Marcy, would you say you have to find that moment or can people gradually do this? I mean, that's what dry January is about. Maybe people thinking about quitting and going in that direction because it is a process yeah so if we're if we are talking about it's two different things right so dry january is about maybe looking at the relationship you have with alcohol okay okay and maybe you think it's a bad habit maybe you want to see if you can quit maybe you're looking at it as a way of just it's a wellness challenge for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So it's finding the different ways, uh, what, what understanding what motivates you to drink, quitting drinking and being an alcoholic, I feel are, are there two different things. If you are participating in dry January, 
you're, you're not at rock bottom, right? You're, you, cause you, most times you're not just going, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to participate in dry January and just quit. It takes a long time to recognize that I have a really deep seated problem with alcohol. If you are questioning your drinking and you're participating, that's like, I feel like you're at the beginning of it. Um, I don't know. Do you feel the same way, Kathy? I feel like if you're just saying like, well, I wonder if I'm drinking too much, right? Maybe I'm starting to drink every evening with dinner. And I, and I don't think that that's probably the best habit to be in. I'm going to participate in dry January. But if you have a real issue with drinking, I would never think to myself, I'm going to participate in dry January because I couldn't imagine my life without alcohol. Yeah, so I agree. Me, they're yeah. two different things. I think that uh, people that are participating in dry January, it's like the threefold that I was talking about. You know, they're using alcohol maybe to deal with stress. It's become a habit to drink every evening or they're, you know, they want to just, they're, they're starting a new wellness journey in January. So you're, you you need to, you want to put down the drink, right? You want to stop drinking. Well, that's not necessarily easy either. Maybe you're not fully addicted to alcohol, but it becomes a part of your life. So now you need to find different ways to deal with stress or tension, right? I get home from work, like, wow, I've had such a day. I can't wait for my glass of wine. Well, you choose to do something different like exercise or meditate or try a new hobby. You know, maybe it's time to, to start expanding and finding who you are, like we were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to start taking the alcohol out of your home so you're not tempted. Another big thing that we learn uh, when you're an alcoholic is triggers. What triggers you? to yeah. drink because we all have things that are normal to us when we're drinking, right? We go to certain places. That's where we drink. We have certain friends. That's who we drink with. We have certain times of the day. That's when we drink. So we have to start changing those things. So yeah. we're not triggered to drink. Mm -hmm. Change so, the people, places, and things. Essentially. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really, um, for, for me, I believe they are two very different things. If you are drinking a lot, you're trying to participate in dry January. I think that's awesome. And, uh, but you may need a little more help than just trying to decide to do it, but it is, you, you do have to change your patterns with dry. You have January. to change everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you do. And I think, you know, there's, there's some things that I like to stress to people, you know, find someone to partner with. It really helps when you have somebody mm -hmm. that can make you accountable. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing these things with, I mean, uh, going to parties, going out to dinner, it's nice to have someone that, that you're doing this with. And if maybe you feel like, oh, well, you know, everyone's having that glass of wine. I really would have like to have that you know, maybe you have that friend with you and you're like, no, we're sticking to this. Let's, you know, have our mocktail tonight. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really important. Um, always, uh, again, you know, setting yourself up for success, you know, having a kind of a plan. This is, you know, this is something you kind of need a plan for making sure the alcohol is not, not in the house, maybe going to different um, activities, not going to the same restaurants, you know, maybe going to, to restaurants that don't have alcohol. There's bars out there now that actually only serve mocktails or they have a mocktail alternative, you know, a cocktail alternative. Um, Interesting. You, yeah. Creating and then, new habits. Yeah. Really. It's yep. really about that. And right. I mean, if we're hangry, right. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. we, you know, there's different things like you, you may think you want that glass of wine, but maybe you're just hungry. Maybe you mm -hmm. need to eat something. Maybe you're a little dehydrated. Maybe drinking some water will, you know, get that, that feeling or that need, uh, and you, you may not want it after that drink a full glass of water, um, rewarding yourself. You know, there's, these are, these are, this is a toxic thing that we're doing, um, putting alcohol into our system. 
So if you're not drinking that, like reward yourself for not doing that. Right. So there's a lot of steps and, and things that we can do. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Kathy DeCaro is nothing short of amazing. She not only drives the world's biggest truck as a heavy equipment operator in Northern Alberta, Canada. She's an international motivational speaker and the author of Dream Big, an autobiography about overcoming a lifetime of trauma and abuse that led to dreams of success. Kathy inspires people the world over to change their lives and improve their self-worth. Her book will change your life. She's passionate about personal growth and believes anyone can change their circumstances and overcome their obstacles if they believe in themselves. Her life will amaze you and seriously inspire you. Be sure to order a copy of her book, Dream Big, on Amazon.com. Industry movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry, our safety champions, the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of and join us on social media. Learn more at truckingmovesamerica.com. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. Past trauma plays a huge role in addiction. These past ghosts impact your thinking and your decision making. If we don't look at the past skeletons, we can't change. And we continue to engage in self-defeating and toxic behavior, like drug or alcohol abuse. We're unable to recognize the triggers that keep us stuck in drinking or drugs. Marcy Hopkins is an award-winning author and host of the inspirational TV show, Wake Up with Marcy and Hillary. She's been talking about how much better her life has gotten in sobriety and how she was reawakened as she shed her past trauma. She rediscovered herself and her possibilities, which helped her change for good. We're discussing all of this because of Dry January, which gets people to look at their relationship with alcohol. It's one step toward examining a possible problem a person may have with drinking. Dry January helps people who want to start a new wellness journey and put down the drink. It's a beginning step of a new mindset on healthier ways to deal with stress and our triggers in life to break the cycle of addiction. Marcy suggests finding an accountability partner who can support you in your sobriety journey. Have a plan. Don't go to the same places and go to bars that only serve mocktails, non-alcoholic beverages. You know, Marcy, the sobriety journey really is a process. As, as people go through dry January, maybe they're trying to determine whether or not they truly have a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, there's always a denial. Humans are very good at denying things. Yes. I'm just fine. It'll be fine. Uh, mm -hmm. I can continue to do this because we don't like to give up habits. <laughs> we don't like to change. If someone uh, goes through dry January, makes a commitment to that, and they realize, hey, I really do have a problem. What kind of resources can they find to continue on the right direction? Well, I, I'm a huge fan of the 12-step program. And mm -hmm. if you're uncomfortable going into a meeting to start, a great thing that came out of COVID is online meetings. I mean, you can, you don't even have to show your face and you can start, you know, just seeing if that's the place for you. Yeah. Um, they have sober coaches now, which are amazing. Um, I think if you are, if your body is truly addicted and it, you know, just stopping cold Turkey can be really bad. And it sounds yeah. like, you know, you, you had to go, you have to go to a rehab, you have to go through detox, um, mm -hmm. and you need someone there, uh, that can take you through that. Uh, but there's so many resources online now. It's incredible. Uh, and the books that are available, like people are talking about this nowadays. So 
you can just Google this and you can find a lot of re uh, resources. Even on my on my personal uh, web page, uh, there I have a whole list of resources. There must be between 50 and 75 addiction and recovery and treatment and all sorts of alcohol information for anybody yeah. all over the U.S. So yeah, just there's links yeah, that, everywhere. Yeah. There are links everywhere, and um, you know I provide that within my book and uh, and you know that the just the action items, right? Taking the action because we can talk about this stuff all day long, but we've got to take the action. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that first step is really really hard. Right, Kathy? Like, oh my oh god. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Brutal. Brutal. Sure. <laughs> Good old toothless Joe is the hero of my story. He got me moving yeah. again. He got you really <laughs> thinking. It was a wake-up call for sure. It was a wake-up yeah. call. And yeah. mine was, you know, I got a DUI and I went to bed uh thinking I'm the victim here. And I woke up the next day and thank goodness God stepped in. And mm -hmm. um I, I was ready. I was ready to just let it go. Yeah. And the thing is, today, I think it's it's a lot more acceptable. And it's taken a while for society to do that, um, especially with drinking, because that's legally acceptable. And that's where a lot of people like to gather and chat and have fun. You feel like the outsider. When you don't want to drink, you get razzed by people. I don't think people do that as much today, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, being stigmatized. Oh, gee, I'm an alcoholic. People have wanted to not say that. I don't think our societies is judgmental. Although I think that there's still a fear element for me to come out and say, gee, I have a problem. People are going to feel I'm labeling myself. I'm going to be an outcast or people are going to judge me. That shouldn't be something that people have to worry about. Well, I Agree? love that we're talking about it, right? Because I think we are we are helping to change that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're, we're, we're normalizing the conversation. I realize there's a lot of shame out there. A lot of people don't talk about it. But the more we talk about it, we are helping to normalize it. And, you know, when we're out there, and I always thought this is that the people that are giving you the hardest time, because I used to be that person, is because you're uncomfortable that that person's not drinking. You, yeah. It's almost like yeah. a reflection of what you're doing. Like you're making me uncomfortable because I want to drink and you're not drinking. So mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I think there's something to that. And, but today, again, we have the mocktails or if you don't want somebody questioning what you're doing, you, you go and get club soda and some cranberry juice with a lime and, or, or like I said, the mocktails that are available now and mm -hmm. all these seltzer brands that are coming out with non-alcoholic drinks, you know, put that in a glass and you don't have to, you don't have, and it looks like you have something. Yeah. Nobody but knows the difference. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I stopped in the beginning, I wasn't telling anyone. And um, I just said that, you know, it was the new year and, or not new year, but I guess at that time it was October, but I was just like, I, you know, I'm on this new wellness journey. You know, I'm, I'm just giving up alcohol for right now. And I want to get, uh, you know, I'm exercising now I'm eating differently. So I made it about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, you know, cause it took me a long time also to be comfortable to share this, right. Sure. You, yeah. It's hard. You do feel like you're going to be judged when you're in a community, but I also was like, Oh my God, what if somebody sees me in the room? But I loved it when somebody was like, well, they're in the room too for the same reason, right? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. And people are afraid of being labeled and not being mm -hmm. accepted. And then to live life without a substance that you've found to be your friend that you depend on, and it's not your friend at all, having to learn to relive life, that's a scary proposition too. But there are so many resources people can seek. Yeah, yeah. So many. And I love that they call it alcohol use disorder now. I mean, that's what they call it. So you don't oh, okay. have, yeah. So you don't have to label yourself as an alcoholic. I mean, yes. When you go in the 12 step program that you do say your name and I'm an alcoholic, but really uh, in the medical world, the term is alcohol use disorder. 
that is less of a label. It doesn't sound mm-hmm. as negative, does it? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So the thing is, is that there's so many levels of alcohol use disorder, right? It's kind of yeah. like autism or uh, bipolar. I mean, there's a spectrum, right? So uh, it, it's hard to know if you have a real problem or not sometimes to admit that. And and it doesn't have to be like Kathy's story where you're standing on the street with nothing. You can be living a life where you're like me, you know, I had married successful man and two kids and doing stuff in the community and working at the school, but life was destructive at home, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So we don't know what happens behind closed doors. And it's hard, I think, as a, as a mother and as a woman, especially to admit that, or as a man too, or in work, because you're so afraid, maybe you'll be fired. Maybe nobody will accept you in the community. But the reality is, is getting healthy for yourself. Yes, it's going to be hard in the beginning, but life is going to be so much better. I can't mm-hmm. stress that enough. Yep. Yep. So Marcy, where can people find your book and your TV show? I love your inspirational messaging here. And this is going to help people for not only dry January, but people who are thinking about maybe making this a lifetime commitment of of change and benefiting from all of this perspective. Your inspirational messages are so important. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I'm on Instagram and uh Facebook and LinkedIn. And also my website is all wake up with Marcy. Um, and my book chaos to clarity, seeing the signs and breaking the cycles is, uh, amazon.com barnes and noble.com walmart.com target.com. Um, but the wonderful thing about Google is, uh, you can put in wake up with Marcy or Marcy Hopkins or chaos to clarity, and hopefully it will take you right there. And, um, you know, please reach out and, and if there's anything you want to talk about, I always, I'm here to help. And, and that's uh, my mission today. And that's why I have my platform, my book, and, um, and thank you for this opportunity to share my story because it, at the, at the end of the day, it is truly about helping others. And with this work, it helps me. Amen. Thank you for sharing this. You're giving people a ray of hope. And maybe getting them to think about changing, which it's hard, but it's baby steps. And baby. and you're making it, I think your message tells people, hey, uh, it, it can be done and it is worth it. Life does get better and you don't need that stuff to survive. There's so much more to life than a substance. And I, I love this. You're empowering people. Oh, thank you so much. And, and thank you for all the work that both of you are doing. Thank you, Marcy. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to empower a lot of women. And your message here is going to empower a lot of people. Thank you for being on the show. I want to remind everybody to definitely check out Marcy's website at wakeupwithmarcy.com. You'll get inspired on a regular basis. It's terrific. We hope you've enjoyed this latest episode. And if you want to hear more episodes of Women Road Warriors or learn more about our show, be sure to check out womenroadwarriors.com. And please follow us on social media. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. Women Road Warriors is on all the major podcast channels like Apple, Spotify, Amazon, Audible, YouTube, and others. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you want to be a guest on the show or have a topic or feedback, email us at sjohnson at womenroadwarriors.com.